Moments before the creation of Rentopia, Orpheus stood proudly beside his older brother Cyberus in a solid gold chariot on the edge of the Cyberverse. Though the Ender God brothers knew the great explosion would be immense, they were unprepared for the overworld demon Hero Brine's influence on the energies of creation, and their golden chariot was ripped asunder at the edge of the energy flux. The brothers plunged out of control toward the surface of Rentopia and were scattered to opposite sides of the overworld. Watching from her star throne above, Orion the Ender God took pity on Orpheus as he searched desperately in vain for his older brother. She visited him on a clear winter's night and offered to help him track down Cyberus. Orpheus accepted the offer and was transformed into a star-forged bow to be used by Orion on her search. Being the greatest hunter and tracker in the multiverse, Orion set forth across Rentopia in search of Cyberus, but was ambushed by the Ender Dragon in a pitch-black catacomb within the depths of an ancient jungle mountain. Orion battled the Ender Dragon for seven days and nights, eventually overpowering it with a beam of blinding starlight shot forth from her eyes at the peak of the jungle mountain. During the battle, however, Orion had lost grip of Orpheus the Starbow after receiving a mighty blow from the Ender Dragon, dropping the weapon to the bottom of a giant ravine where it remained lost for three ages. Greetings, Cyberdogs and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from the streets of Mole City in this Let's Play Minecraft survival series. In the previous episode, we were all at the Cyberdog Drive-In for Grand Premier Night. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to start construction of a triple mob spawner gravity farm castle of awesomeness. And it is gonna be freaking sweet. Damn! Sit back and relax, my cyber diggity dogs, with your tasty ass beverages and crunchy ass snacks because it is time to play some Minecraft survival. Oh my cyber diggity dubs, I am so pumped for today's episode man because we are going to start work on an absolutely epic build today. Give me one second man. Ah oh, man, just needed a sip of that tasty beverage. Mm. Well guys, I have the armor set of the butthole upon my person. As you can see, this is the gear that we stick on when we start new construction projects. Uh, my, uh, my cap broke at some point, so I've lost that unfortunately. But guys, while you were away, I have been one busy dog around Mole City. Want to take you on a very quick tour before we start working on our triple mob gravity spawner trap thingy. And uh, as you guys can see, I have beautified this place by adding a little touch that was a recommendation by one of you cyber dogs one of you guys said why not add some grass around the base of the trees and then use some bone meal to make some foliage and you can see that I have done just that guys it is looking absolutely beautiful around Mole City you know this little bit of greenery in the city I, I think really helps to make the city pop helps to make it come alive a little bit more and it helps to make it you know so that it's not so much of a concrete jungle and it's actually more of a, a sort of cityscape which uh, is absolutely awesome I'm loving it man and let me tell you something, guys. It was an absolute freaking mission to get all of these villagers back from the Premier. But everybody is back in their rightful position. Old Griswold's taken his spot back in uh, the blacksmith over here. We've got all of the um, all of the villagers are back home as they should be. And Hippolyta is back in her rightful position in the Mole Mart Bazaar right over here. So we and of course all of the villagers in the market lane are in place too. All of the animals are back. Big Max back in his freaking pen. Uh, Beatrice and Diablo are back in Beatrice's courtyard and Beatrice's quarters. And man, you know, things have gone returned back to normal after what was an absolutely amazing premiere. Now, some of you guys have been asking me, are we going to have another premiere in the Cyberdog Drive-In? And that is an absolute hell's yeah, my friends. You guys carry on making your movies and carry on uploading them to YouTube and putting them onto dogcraft.net. And guys, we are going to be doing a premiere every 10 episodes along with getting a uh, new cyber dogs into the cyber dog monuments so if you guys you filmmakers out there still want to see your videos on the big screen you keep on making those bad boys and submitting them man and we're going to be choosing uh, a couple of videos every 10 episodes for the premiere if we've got some uh, that is of course now 
on to the real freaking meat and potatoes of today's episode, guys. I am so freaking excited because, you know, it is about time that we made a proper mob spawner trap up in our Minecraft survival world. Currently, the only mob spawner trap we have right now is the bot hole, which is that structure over there. It is a dark room spawner, which isn't actually a very efficient mob spawner at all. In fact, it produces hardly any freaking mobs whatsoever. Uh, and I think that's probably, I don't know, something changed over the last couple of patches and the mob spawner just isn't functioning as well as uh, as it should be now what i've decided to do uh, for the next huge project in this series is to create a triple mob spawner gravity trap now let me try and explain exactly what that is now i think it was at the end of season two we discovered that there were in fact quite a few mob spawners very close to one another just outside the lakeside villa over here when we were working on the lakeside villa docks we discovered that underneath uh, within the depths of the docks was a mob spawner and check it out it is right over here very very close to the lakeside villa actually and this is a spider spawner over here um, and i've indicated where it is from that uh, gravel pole um, just above so we've got a spider spawner over there which is very awesome because that means we can get infinite amounts of string and of course we have a villager in the market lane that trades string for emeralds so it's basically going to give us an unlimited supply of emeralds which then gives us an unlimited supply of eyes of the end from griswold uh whew, that was too close for comfort man creeper you freaking butthole how did you spawn here oh man freaking creep is still harassing me even in the broad daylight now <laughs> this gravel pole over here indicates where that spider spawner was which is down there now there is another yeah there it is check it out there is another gravel pole that i stuck up yep there it is you can see it sticking out of the canopy of this jungle and there is another mob spawner in the very near vicinity guys just around the corner over here uh, let me take you there just to show you where it is and yes there it is so this gravity pole indicates the position of another mob spawner and i think from here we can see can we see where the other one is um i think we can it's, there we go so there's the one here's the second and then the third mob spawner is just around the corner now i have an idea i have had an epiphany and I want to share it with you guys. And uh, I don't know if this is actually going to work, man. But I'm going to do my freaking darnest to try and make it work. Because if it does work, it's going to be absolutely amazing. Now, what I would like to do in uh, this position over here, looking over the ocean and with the strip mine outpost in the distance, I want to create a giant mob processing facility castle. And basically what that means is I want to make a giant castle where we are going to be killing the mobs that are coming out of these three spawners. So the idea is that we want to make a trap on top or underneath of each of these spawners and then uh, somehow find a way to direct all of the mobs that spawn within them into the single processing facility where they will drop down a large tower of around 22 blocks high so that when they land they don't die but we'll be able to punch them with one hit and uh, that is essentially going to allow us to process the mob outputs of three different spawners which is just going to be absolutely amazing right that's going to basically give us all the xp that we require to make some new freaking weapons and all the string that we'll need uh, to do some more trading and of course a whole bunch of dead zombie flesh which you can also use to trade with one of the villagers i believe that is a zombie spawner down there yeah that looks like a zombie spawner and this was a, a spawner that we actually hadn't spotted yet uh, in preparation for this video i came back to this position to try and find that entrance to the other mob spawner that we had found uh, at, sort of at the end of season two and i i heard a whole bunch of zombies going on and i dug downwards and check it out actually broke into another mob spawner which is absolutely awesome you can see that these chests were not even looted man these are still like man check these are like 1.5 chests i suppose i mean this is a super old mob spawner uh, it hasn't got any of the the new awesome stuff in it unfortunately and i do believe the entrance to the other mob spawner is yes it's over here and this this is i think where we ended season two um 
I think it was season two or season three. I, I can't quite remember. Uh, but there is another mob spawner down here. Let me take you guys all the way down there so we can have a look at what this mob spawner actually produces. I think it's down here. Yes, here it is. Here it is. Uh, and this was one that we had discovered, as you can see, because we'd taken out all of the mossy cobblestone. And this is another spider spawner. So we're just going to get an absolute butt ton of string, which gives us an unlimited, uh, basically unlimited emeralds, which most importantly, guys, gives us unlimited eyes of the ender from Griswold, because of course he gives us eyes of the ender for emeralds. And that means we can find a stronghold and make our way toward the end. So this is going to be an absolutely epic freaking build guys and i can't wait to get cracking man and what i've already done as you could see was i set up a couple of work uh, working chests here this has got everything that we're going to need for today's episode um i just picked up all of this cobblestone from the strip mine outpost and this is just going to be a chest to drop off random jazz like this in my inventory i also have uh, a couple stacks uh, a couple blocks of iron so that we can make some tools some spruce wood so we can make some tools some ladders in case we need them and a whole bunch of food so we are ready to do some crafting my friends i'm gonna go and sleep in the lakeside villa i'll see you on this other side of this complaint complaint all right welcome back cyber diggity dogs i have just taken a sleep made a whole bunch of tools that we're going to need for this project and i've already started working on clearing out an area around this particular mob spawner now what i am thinking guys is the following now i have no idea whether this is going to work but i think that this might be the most efficient and the best way to make use of having three spawners in a very close location to one another what i want to do is create three individual dark room spawner traps as you would normally and then I want to use aqueducts to connect up the spawner traps to the mob processing facility castle. Now what does that mean uh, exactly? Well let me try and explain it right. So for example uh, in this particular mob spawning location over here what I want to do is build four spawner pads around the spawner and I want those spawner pads to be surrounded by aqueducts. Those aqueducts are going to push the mobs that this spawner produces on the pads off uh, into a tunnel, uh, into a, well, into a network of aqueducts, in fact, that is going to basically drag them all the way to the mob processing facility. Now, in the mob processing facility, we will have a giant tower, uh, and the mobs will be dragged up to the top of that tower, and then they will drop 23 blocks down, which will almost kill them, but but, uh, not quite there'll be one basically have one health left and then in the mob process processing facility we'll be able to punch them to death uh, thus gaining all the xp that we will get from killing them and of course getting all of their sweet ass items that they drop i guess the real challenge is trying to find a way to connect the various uh, mob spawners together using aqueducts and that's going to be the real challenge i think uh, setting up the sort of spawning pads and whatnot, I think that's going to be pretty rudimentary. But as the mob spawners themselves are on different levels, you know, this one is pretty high up. The one that's uh, sort of very deep down, you know, you have to go down that uh, that staircase to get to it. That's that's a mile away. And of course, the mobs that get generated inside of that mob spawner are going to have to come up some sort of a chute. We're going to have to find some way to, to make those mobs go up. And uh, we can actually do that using waters and water and ladders, which is really awesome. And that's why I'm so excited about uh, this particular project, guys, because we're not just going to be making a building this time around. We're going to get technical and we're going to be making a very interesting mob spawner trap, not just a dark room trap, but actually using Using the power of these mob spawners to uh, to generate as much mobbage as we possibly can now what i'm going to do now guys is just clear away this area collect all of this mossy cobblestone and set up the pads uh, in the way that i'm thinking i'll bring you back on the other side of this kaplam after i've done that and we can have a little look at what it's gonna look like all right guys welcome back i am making some pretty decent progress over here on the first of what is going to be three mob spawning chambers that are going to form a part Part of our giant mob farm facility and man it's gonna be so awesome I'm gonna I'm gonna make it look like a castle I've decided it's not just gonna be a sort of room somewhere I'm gonna make it look absolutely jazz-tastic guys what I have done over here is set up a spawning pad that is seven by seven and the reason that we do that is because I can show you exactly the mechanism that we're going to be using to deliver those mobs to the processing facility now if we drop a water source underneath the mob spawner like this you will see that the water 
water source actually ends just at this position over here. So seven blocks from the water source position. Now what we're going to do is create another set of aqueducts beneath the mob spawning chamber. And that set of aqueducts is going to be funneling the mobs that spawn in this particular chamber toward the processing facility up there on the surface. Uh, so we actually have two levels to this uh, specific chamber to work on. Number one, we've, uh, we need to work on the pads themselves. And then number two, we need to work on the aqueducts that are going to be running beneath the pads. Tell you what, guys, I'm going to get all of these pads set up, all of the aqueducts set up too. I'll bring you back in a second. Oh, cyber diggity dogs, you got to be proud of me right now, man. Because I just caught myself mid-freaking derp. That's right, man. I almost noobed out on this build from the very start. But you know what? My brain kicked in and I suddenly realized that the design for this particular mob spawner chamber was actually wrong. So I'm going to take a sip of this beverage to celebrate my awesomeness. Ah, hmm. Now let me explain. Uh, in the previous design that you just saw, our aqueducts were only one block wide. And that, of course, means that we would not be able to funnel any spiders down these particular aqueduct tunnels because spiders are two blocks wide. So what I have done, guys, is I've increased the width of the aqueducts by two. And what this means is that we're going to have to place some trap doors on top of these aqueducts so that we can try to persuade the mobs to actually walk over. Uh, how do we make trap doors again? It's like this, right? Yeah, th there we go. That's wooden trap doors. Now, this is exactly the same as the mob trap that we made in Feed the Beast and the same as the mob trap that we made in uh, the, actually in the bot hole itself has this particular mechanism. What we're going to be doing is sticking trap doors over these double aqueducts and the mobs think that tra the trap door is a solid block so they walk on top of it and then they fall down into the aqueduct and are thus delivered to the processing facility. Of course, what this means, guys, is that I have to increase the width of some of these spawning pads over here and I also, of course, have to increase the width of the outer aqueducts by one also so i'm gonna get that done see you guys in a second all right cyber diggity dogs i've just made my way through about half a dozen freaking iron pickaxes man but as you can see this spawning chamber is starting to look freaking awesome i've made double block wide aqueducts all the way around each of the spawning pads i've also lowered the aqueducts by one so we can actually now start putting in some water to see if this is going to function the way that we wanted to so why don't we use this particular corner as a test now we want water flowing from the corners along the outer aqueducts and of course flowing from the inside along the inner aqueducts that means that when the mobs are on top of the spawning pads wherever they walk they are going to eventually fall into an aqueduct and thus be delivered to the processing facility castle on the surface so i think what we should do is try and potentially make a let's make an infinite water source in the corner over here like so and the theory is if we break apart this wall the water should flow just to the edge and that is absolutely perfect check it out this one's also going to flow just to the edge um, of the hole now these holes are going to go down into a second set of aqueducts that are going to be used that we're going to use to deliver the mobs to the the processing facility but that is something we're going to start in tomorrow's episode i think guys but for now now, let's try and make another infinite water source. I think we'll probably just be able to steal some water from this one. So let's get our buckets filled. Yeah, sweet. That didn't break that uh, water source at all. So let's make an infinite water source here. And that should do exactly the same thing. Let's have a look absolutely perfect oh man that is awesome there we go guys so the water is underneath uh, the four square over here and and all we needed was those two water sources to basically give enough water into each of these aqueducts to push the mobs into the holes uh, at the end of each of these aqueducts over here and the corner flows are going to be sending the mobs into the same holes should they fall off uh, the side of the spawn platforms on in these directions all right this is looking absolutely awesome man let me finish off all of the water sources guys and we'll have a look at how much work we have left to do all right cyber dogs welcome back all of the water sources have now been put into place and our aqueducts for this spawning chamber are flowing something 
fierce. Oh man, this is awesome. We have made so much progress today. Next up, guys, we are going to be working on the aqueducts that are going to be running underneath the spawning chamber. We need to find a way to direct all of the mobbage that this spawning chamber is going to produce toward the mob processing facility on the surface. And as you guys can see, man, it's looking absolutely epic. Well, guys, I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. I've had an absolute freaking blast, man. I cannot wait to get these three mob chambers connected. I, it's just going to be an absolute ridiculous amount of mobbage that our facility is going to be able to create. And uh, man, it's going to be absolutely epic. Thank you so much for watching this episode, my friends. If you liked it, hit that like button if you haven't subscribed yet. You smackity smack that subscribe button. The next episode, we're going to be working on the delivery aqueducts for this particular chamber. And in the meantime, guys, I'm going to finish this chamber off and get working on the other two also. We'll see you guys in the next episode.